Hi folks, welcome to Crisco's Corner. Unfiltered commentary. And that's your truth, the real truth. Please like, share, and subscribe. And as always, thank you for your support. Welcome back from Fox News. I'm telling you, folks, this is sickening. It's absolutely sickening. Cops blame Trump Republicans for allegedly inspiring and then downplaying January 6th Capitol attack. Officers want committee to dig into Trump and Republicans' culpability and inspiring and downplaying the attack. Now, here's the funny part. They picked a couple of Republicans that hate Trump's guts, by the way, to be on the committee. Cheney and Adam, uh, what's his name, K uh, Kissinger. That way they can say to the public, it's a bipartisan committee. Yeah, this is what I talked about in the episode just prior. This is called controlling the narrative. They don't have any real Republicans on that committee. There's several questions I like to ask myself. One, why were you guys totally unprepared? Were you told to stand down? Why was the entire south side of the Capitol building, literally the entire side, unguarded? Not one security or police officer there. Not one Metropolitan Police Department officer. Not one. Why? Why did you take it so lightly? There's 400,000 people there. Even if you've only had 1% and 99 were peaceful, that's still 4,000 people. Totally unprepared. Who told you to stand down? Why? Why don't we get the mayor of Washington, D.C.? Why? Oh, why? Oh, why? Several days before the rally, she was asked they could put together National Guard help to encircle the Capitol building. And she said no. No, do they want this to happen? I do have to say in all honesty, the ones that did storm the Capitol building, stupid as hell, they fell right into it. I mean, it is handed, they just handed the Democrats all kinds of ammunition. And we know how it works when you control the media like they do. They're going to pound this in just as much as they did COVID, just as much as the Russian collusion. A bunch of ass hats acted stupid. Yeah. Were some of the officers upset? Yeah. But here's, I am such a huge fan of law enforcement. I've always been endorsed by them every time I ran for public office here in upstate New York. Here we have here a tweet from Senator Rand Paul. BLM, BLM rioter punched a police officer in the face requiring surgical repair. Punishment? Released on his own recognizance. Nonviolent trespassing in Capitol on January 6th. Solitary confinement without parole. Double standard, you bet. This is from a sitting U.S. senator. As you can see there, him and his wife were attacked by protesters. And the Capitol Police came to their aid. Officer got punched in the face. Required surgery. Where was the outrage from the people today? The Capitol Police, from the pounding they were taking last year. Remember, this was after the, I believe it was the 4th of July fireworks display in Washington at the White House that Senator Paul and his wife attended. Where was their outrage then? Where were their tears then? Where were their pounding on the table then? Where was Cheney and Kissinger? Where was their outrage then? Know what you got? You got this. Well, I can understand. You're a police officer in Washington, D.C., whether on the Metro Police Department or the Capitol Police, you got to play politics because the place is 99% liberal. I get it. But you know what, though? Don't show up after the fact and have these crocodile tears. I'm sorry. Senator Paul is right. Double standard? Oh, my God. They passed double standard a year ago, two years ago. It's just outrageous. 
And you know the sick part is? They might get away with it. And I still do. But here's the problem. Officers in these big cities have to play politics. They put their finger up in the air. They see which way the wind is blowing. Were they upset about what happened? Yeah, the one grown African-American gentleman was called the N-word several times. I'm sure that's not the first or the last, but the funny part is I wanted to ask these officers a couple of questions. One, who told you to stand down? Who? Damn good question. Number two, during the entire prior year when they had the White House surrounded and you guys were the defense as well as Secret Service, last summer, my understanding is over 750 Metropolitan Police Officers and Capitol Police and some Secret Service were injured. 750. Where was, you, where was your outrage then? Where was your outrage that it was the BLM and Antifa protesters, the anti-Trump people? What did we hear from you guys? What did we hear? We heard this. I'm not putting down the fact you thought it was traumatic of what happened. You didn't know what these people were going to do. I get it. And they didn't kill any police officers, what the media says. One died two days later of a stroke. Two gentlemen were outside, didn't go in the building at all. They were a part of the rally. I believe one had a stroke. No one had a heart attack. The only one that died at the hands of a weapon was the poor Air Force veteran. She was just trying to get in. It was stupid, but it wasn't worth dying for. The officer panicked, and I even backed him up and said, you know what, in that situation, he just panicked, and he pulled the trigger, and it sucks. And they won't even reveal his name, but, but believe me for a minute, if that was an unarmed black man in Detroit or some other major city, that person's name, every one of his relatives, down to his third cousin, his high school girlfriend and every one of his teachers in school would be doxxed. This double standard is out of control. And here's the thing to Republicans on this committee. Yeah, okay, I see what you're doing. You're very, it's very similar to, I'll use the American Revolution as an example. When the American Revolution started, the Declaration of Independence, the Tories, basically the way it worked was, Basically, a third wanted the revolution. A third uh, were loyalists to the crown and didn't want it. And a third was like, leave me the frick alone. I want nothing to do with it. And so they put their fingers up in there and they saw there's no way the Americans can hold out. There's no way the Americans can hold out against the biggest Navy and army in the world. It's not going to happen. And eight years later, yeah, they did. That's what these Republicans are doing. They put their finger up in the air and they said, hey, Democrats control the House. They control the Senate. They have the White House. Midterms are coming up in a year and a half. What's going to happen? And they control 90% of cable news and 99% of social media. They control the narrative. I'm going to protect my own behind. Yeah, they don't like Donald Trump. You know what? This has nothing to do with Trump. Nothing to do with Trump. One thing less than the Republicans should learn is with the Democrats, they stick together. They might have their disagreements privately, but they don't put their dirty laundry out. You guys should learn from them. Where is the outrage at these officers when all those riots were going on in D.C. last year? Where was the crying? Where was the emotions? Nothing. Were they put through something? Yeah. Was it traumatizing to some of them? Yeah. Like the CNN leaked Project Veritas video that YouTube took down that AOC was concerned that not only she was going to die, she was going to be S assaulted. Well, we found out later she was across the street in another building for Pete's sake. These people are, are, are pros at manipulating the public. They're extremely good. Extremely good. And they own the media. Social media and the government now are one entity. Cable news, not so much, but damn near. 
Oh, you guys are the only ones. We've got to deal with crimes that occur above us. Metropolitan Police Department Officer Daniel Hodges said, I need you guys to address if anyone in power had a role in this. If anyone in power coordinated or aided, abetted, or tried to downplay, tried to prevent the investigation of this terrorist attack. It wasn't premeditated. They brought no weapons. I think one guy had a crowbar. If this was an organized insurrection, they really suck at it. And by the way, this isn't 1520. We storm the government or you storm the castle and now all of a sudden you're the government. It's ridiculous. Anyone in power had any role in this? Why don't we look to the D.C. mayor? Why don't we find out why find out why the entire south side of the building was unguarded? Who told them to do that? And that'll never come out. Tried to prevent the investigation of this terrorist attack. You want to do a real investigation or you want to have a show trial? Come on. The fact the only Republicans on the committee Adam Kissinger and Liz Cheney were selected by Pelosi made for a hearing with little dissent or fireworks. But with graphic body camera video and emotional testimony, the hearing was still gripping and at times jarring television. I bet it was. See all those people c- coming towards you? Yeah, I bet it was. The mobs of terror was a coordinator effort shouting, heave ho, as they synchronized pushing their weight forward, crushing me further against the metal door frame. That's like getting five or six people in front of something you want to be moved and say, ready? One, two, three, push. That's a coordinated effort. A man in front of me grabbed my baton. He bashed me in the head and face with it. That asshole should go to jail. Rupturing my lip and an additional injury to my skull. That asshole should go to jail. And for a while, have no problem. But honestly and truly, officer, when your own men, including yourself probably, were injured last summer guarding the White House and other federal buildings from Antifa and BLM and the so-called peaceful protesters that burned down a 200-year-old church or tried to, where was your outrage then? This is ridiculous. Politics and this progressive wokeness has infested law enforcement. You know, I expected it a little bit more in D.C. than anywhere else, but I, I, I'm even surprised. Officer Michael Fanon, meanwhile, detailed how he was, he was electrocuted again and again with a taser. And I am sure I was screaming. I don't think I could hear my own voice. Where the hell they get the taser from? At least two lawmakers, Kissinger and Adam Schiff, were choked up listening to the officer's testimony. Adam Schiff. Jesus. You know, these people can't win. Yeah, let's get to the bottom of the matter. Let's get to the real truth of it. Let's have a real inquiry. But no. U.S. Capitol Police First Class Harry Dunn talked about how the attackers hurled the N-word at him. Yeah. Gunnel, meanwhile, emphasized that the mob was not Antifa. It was not Black Lives Matter. It was not the FBI. It was Trump supporters that he sent them over to the Capitol that day. He didn't send them over to the Capitol. It's a lie. It's another lie, like the Russian collusion. On what he would like the committee to accomplish, Fanon said he wanted to dig into beyond the security failures at the Capitol, beyond the security failures at the Capitol and the USCP budget. Ground, he said, has already been covered and asked more fundamental questions. No, there's no no ground been covered on the security failures. The mayor of D.C. should be there. The people that told the Capitol Police to stand down on one whole side of the building where it originally started, on the south side. No, they haven't been addressed. This is a kangaroo court. It's amazing to me how these progressive liberals have been screaming for decades about unfair court system. How it's all one-sided. Talk about projection. These guys are the worst. Unbelievable. While I understand there have been investigations of the events on January 6th, my understanding is that those have addressed some of the micro-level concerns. We had a violent political rhetoric. We had the organization of a rally whose title was Stop the Steal. Oh, really? When you have a vice presidential candidate going on national television... I just showed an episode where he's got her quote, Kamala Harris, 
saying the the protesters, I shouldn't say rioters, but the rioters are still out there and they're not going to stop and they shouldn't stop even after the election and they won't stop and I applaud that. Not a word for many of these cops. Not a word when over 700 of them were injured last year in D.C. Unbelievable. What I'm looking for is investigation of those actions and also whether there was collaboration between those members or staff and these terrorists. What staff? I would have first class Harry Dunn asked the committee not to shy away from the political causes of the attack. It's not a secret that it was political. They were literally there to stop the steal, Dunn said. Telling the truth shouldn't be hard. They couldn't stop it. Any moron that thinks if you storm the Capitol building, you become the government is an idiot. And this guy that believes it. One of two things. He's, he's completely brainwashed. Oh, somebody called me N-word. I'm sure it's not the first time in his life. People have called me worse. Yeah, does it suck? Of course it does. The officers are also harsh and Republican. We're downplaying the violence, which forced hundreds of lawmakers and former Vice President Pence into hiding. It's disgraceful that members of our government, I believe, are responsible for inciting that behavior and then continue to propagate these statements. Well, what was the assignment of behavior last year when there were billions of dollars in damage, tens of thousands of people, hundreds of thousands of people's lives destroyed, 10 times the amount of death? 50 times the amount of injury than the so-called insurrection. Where was your outrage then, sir? To me, those individuals represent the worst that America has to offer. The worst America has to offer is sitting in the vice presidential uh, residence and in the White House, edging people on to riot, to destroy, to burn. Where was your outrage then? This is your chance at your 15 minutes of fame? Give me a break. You're talking about people who claim they're pro-law enforcement, pro-police, pro-law and order. And yet when they had the chance and the opportunity to do something about it, to other people, Colin, well, you don't. You passed a buck like nothing happened. Because 99, 90% of the people that were part of the so-called insurrection were just standing there watching. Whatever happened to the mostly peaceful protest? There was almost 400,000 people by some estimates at the rally. Yeah, two or 300, from my understanding, are the ones that went after the Capitol building. Sounds like mostly peaceful to me. Where's the inquiries on all that rioting in D.C.? We won't even talk about the rest of the country because that doesn't affect these gentlemen. We'll just talk about D.C. Where was your outrage? Where was your zeal for getting to the bottom of this? We got, we got this. This is a show trial. Show trials were very popular in the 1930s in a European country that I won't name. Thompson said there would be another hearing by a committee next month. Punchball News reported that Thompson plans to issue, promptly issue subpoenas to get witnesses before the committee. And like little subpoenas will include some congressional Republicans, high-profile Trump allies, allies, and even the former president himself. They have to do this. They have to do this this way. It's a kangaroo court. There's no other side to this. They pick two Republicans that hate Trump's guts. And then they call themselves bipartisan. Republicans, however, argue the committee is asking the wrong questions. Representative Jim Banks, rep- a Republican Indiana who was blocked from the committee by Pelosi said the officers were not asked why were they not prepared for the January 6th when there was intelligence that told them something dangerous was going to happen. This is politically designed by Democrats to stop Republicans from winning back the majority in the midterms. Meanwhile, Dunn put the responsibility for the attack at the feet of Trump and Trump's allies. This isn't the first time that the mega people came here to the Capitol, Dunn said. There were some skirmishes, but never an attempt to overthrow democracy. Dunn added, the only difference that I see in January 6th is they had marching orders, to, so to say. So to say. When people felt emboldened by people in power, they assumed they were right. Crack of crap. Sir, when you, you, probably you personally as well. Where were you and all your colleagues in Washington last year? 750 injured. That's just guarding the White House. 
But yet you said nothing. The Democrats, why aren't there real Republicans on there that don't hate Trump's guts? You know, if this was a, a black man on trial for murder or something outrageously like sexual you know, assault, and it was an all-white jury, and two of the jurors were Klan members. Would think they would be screaming? Don't you think the lawyer would be screaming? Don't you think the media would be screaming how unfair this trial is? And this is what this is. It's a trial. But the people that are on trial cannot answer back. They cannot fight back. Because they picked two Republicans. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. I like to get to the bottom of all this too. I like to get to the bottom of what happened last year. We'll just leave it at that because YouTube will take this down. I like to get to the bottom of all of this, but not when it's one-sided. Yeah, there was a bunch of people that acted stupid. Yeah, there was people that caused violence, and they should go to jail. I have zero problem. But they have a 60-year-old woman that walked through a doorway looking around, taking selfies, by the way, with these same Capitol Police. They didn't see their lives in danger that much there. Is in jail and has been in jail for months. Meanwhile, district attorneys all over the country, including Washington, D.C., let rioters go every single time they riot. They don't even have make bail. They don't even have bail. It's disgusting. You want to piss people off? Have a two-tier justice system. Something that the Democrats have been screaming about for years about minorities. Righteous indignation. We're screaming because there's been a two-tier justice system for years and years and years. And then they turn around and do it themselves. Freaking hypocrites. I still am a huge proponent of law enforcement. But you, you were there to give a sob story. I'm sorry you were. And you were there to suck up to the people in D.C. For your own personal gain. I'm sorry. I believe that. Should have kept to the facts, just like it was a police report. But no, this is reality TV. My God, you know, some of you people need to go back, some of you younger people that can hear this, to a movie called Network in the 1970s. You want to see how they predicted things were going to be? It will scare the crap out of you to watch that movie from the 1970s. It's called Network. It won a ton of awards, including an Academy Award, I believe. This is a show trial. It's a farce. It's not a fact-finding committee at all. No one's going to ask any tough questions. No one. No one. I hate to go on and on and on, but they're going to, let's see, this is what, July, towards the end of July. They're going to get the mileage out of this all the way through the end of the year. And then they're going to have another committee starting early next year, just in time for the midterms. Midterms. I got to give the Democrats credit. They don't let a crisis go to waste. And the idiots that stormed the Capitol building handed them this gold on a silver platter. Anyway, they'll come around and they're going to say the people that love Trump, people that like Trump, in the Senate and the House, Trump himself, all the people in his cabinet, everybody that helped him, even the gardener at Mar-a-Lago and the maid at Mar-a-Lago are all guilty. And it's Trump. This is about not letting Donald Trump run for president again. They are scared to death of him. But not because he's a monster or a psycho. It's because they're going to get wiped off the face of the earth politically. And they see it coming. And they are scared to death. And like a wounded animal, they're lashing out. Well, they've got nobody to blame but themselves. Trump isn't the problem. Trump is a symptom of the sickness and how you've been screwing over middle-class Americans by the tens of millions for the last two or three decades. Shame on you. And now it's coming home to roost. Now finally got people got so mad that several hundred stormed the actual Capitol building. 
Look in the mirror, Democrats. Look in the mirror, progressives. You brought this upon yourself by ignoring and screwing over millions of people for money. Until next time, goodbye and good luck.